What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner, TigerFitness.com. I want to talk about studies. So I've gotten into it in the past, mainly with the Turcastron people, because I keep saying, if your ingredient works, why don't you just run human studies? And I'm going to explain why we run human studies, the purpose they serve, and also why I understand in some way while some people don't do studies, why they don't do studies. So let's get into that, right? So what does it take to do a study? Well, it takes money. So you're looking at six figures, 100 to $500,000 to conduct a study with a large group. What is a large statistically significant group? You're looking at 100 plus people, okay? So the study that I just helped conduct had over 100 people, and it costs a lot of money. Now, when you're looking at why you would do the study, number one is, well, as an ingredient, you want to know that it works, so you're not selling fake stuff. Number two is structure function claims. So if you see on a supplement, helps build muscle 33% faster than placebo, helps boost recovery blank percent over placebo, doubles your bench press over placebo in eight weeks. Those are things that were validated, we assume, or else the government's coming at you. Someone's going to sue you. Those are things that are validated in a statistically significant study, meaning normally I like to use around 100 or so people. And again, the lawyers can fight that one out. So the structure function claims are key to selling supplements because those are the claims you can legally make on your product because they are validated by human data. We can't really use rat data. We can't really use rodent data. You can, but good luck litigating that. Has to be human data and it has to be clear and demonstrable. Okay, another reason you do studies is to find out the dosing. For example, and I'm going to throw out numbers. These might or might not be the numbers used in the study. I'm not going to throw out what ingredient it was. So you do one study for the structure function claims for the, let's say you're, you're measuring cognition. So you're measuring reaction time. You're re, uh, measuring memory recall. You're measuring reaction to stress. All these different things you can measure via validated testing, right? So you do the study, same exact study, same exact protocol with two gram dose, with five gram dose. And then you might do an eight, 10 or 15 gram dose to find out at what level you get each of these benefits. Now you might get zero to five things at two grams. Then you might get more effect at five grams. Then you might get even more at eight grams. And then we find nothing really happened at 15 grams. That means that, okay, the minimum effect of a dose, a dose would be, eight, would be two grams, but at eight grams, you kind of get that point of diminishing return. So there's no reason to go over that based on the data we're doing there on that specific measured aspect. Now, when looking at Turcastrone, it's really wild. And I haven't looked at the bottles or anything to look at claims. But due to the fact, and again, I'm not shitting on Turcastrone. I actually think there's promise. I do think the studies they have on diseased individuals. Again, when I look at the data on Turcastrone, I see data that is promising. It's in people with diabetes mellitus, and it's in people with anemia. And they're very small groups. You're looking at, like, I believe it was 20 to 30 people max. You're looking at small sets. Now, there is a place for case studies. You can publish a case study, but you can't make the claims on it. And one, N equals 1 just doesn't fly in the scientific community. So with that being said, when I look at going back to Turkestrone, there are zero structure function claims they can legally make unless I'm missing some data. Although the studies indicate they might have impact in certain degrees of hypertrophy or um, having anti-catabolic effects, there's still no structure function. So every claim they make is a risk. Every claim they make is not only a risk for litigation, but it's a risk for potential, well, people not getting results, you're a liar. So there's why we do studies. 
Now, going back, I know you're sick of hearing about this, to why we did that amino acid experiment in 2009. So we published a paper on branched chain amino acids in 2009. At that point, now, it wasn't a big enough study, but it's all I could afford at the time. It was a 36-person study, and you had three groups of 12, one being placebo, one being whey protein, one being branched chains, controlled training, controlled diet, all the great measurements, fantastically put together study. Great study. Wish, it had, wish we had at least 36 people per group, but again, didn't have the bag then, right? So in that study, we did it because we wanted to show that they worked for the application, which was intra-workout, that we thought it worked in. And it gave us enough data to say, okay, there is reason to believe that this works. Now, science, you'll notice that some studies show nothing. Some studies show something. And that's where you get a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis takes all the studies, let's say on creatine, and it analyzes them. And it takes all that data and combines it and gives you the meta-analysis of all the studies, essentially a super study, the gold standard. But without studies, we have nothing. So how do we know that things work? Well, a lot of times you try it, but how do you know what to try if you don't know what it does? And that's why it's on the onus of either the IP holder of the ingredient or of the company selling it. Again, I didn't own a patent on branched amino acids. I just thought it was my duty, not only my fiduciary duty in my company to prove this works so we keep selling it, but also my duty to my customers to show that in scientific, well put together data, there is reason to believe that this works. Reason to believe that this works. That's studies in a nutshell why they're done, how they're done. There's also, IP is fantastic. So let's say I own, let, let's use something that's going on right now. Futureceuticals owns an ingredient called Cognitique. Now they're suing, and I believe the, the name of the brand, the ingredient they're suing is Neuro Rush. So when you own an ingredient, to get that IP, to get the patents, you run studies. Those studies cost one million up to $10 million, some of these large scale studies, sometimes more, right? So Futureceuticals is suing this other company for violating their IP, for violating their patent, for violating their ingredient. Now, why is that okay? Well, patents need to be protected. Without protecting patents, you really have nothing. So if someone violates that, they're not spending the money to do the research on that IP. So I just put out $30 million on this ingredient and you're gonna infringe on that IP and blasphemy. I'm gonna sue the living hell out of you. And I hope Futureceuticals, assuming that their claim is valid, which those guys are awesome, pretty sure they're not gonna bring a privileged suit up against these people. I hope they take them to the cleaners because protecting IP is the very basis of what our system is built on. It's what forces ingredient companies like NNB, like TSI, like uh, GoBHB, it's what forces the ingredient companies to keep doing data, to keep validating their ingredient, to keep gaining and amassing those structure function claims. Hopefully this video helped you. As you, get, as you know, I'm standing outside. Oh, the hydrangeas, yeah, they're getting a little brown. They're about to go away, summer's well, it's September. We still got a little bit more on the hydrangeas. No notes, top of my head. So if I misspoke a little bit. Please correct me in the comment section below. If I mis misstated anything, misquoted anything, I know I got futureceuticals right, and I know I told my story about the study right. But I want to make sure that you guys understand why companies protect their IP. I also want to let you understand, I want to help you understand why we do studies. And I want to help you understand why when companies make outlandish claims that aren't backed by human data with structure function claims that I talk about it. It's not because I don't like Greg Doucette. I love Greg. I love the guy. I want to see some structure, structure function studies done. And if there are some, please, I haven't seen them. I've seen the studies out of Uzbekistan. And again, there's studies 
but they're not on healthy human subjects. And they're small. I want to see data. Is that on him to do it? I don't know. Does he, does he own the ingredient? Does he own, I, don't, I don't know if he does. Is he the exclusive distributor of it? I don't know. I don't know. But I would like to see that because if this thing works, the world deserves to know. And people like me who question things because there's no studies, because there's no structure function claims, I want to shut people like me up. This is all because I want to see people take what works. This is all because I want to know what works so I could take it myself. Totally, that's it. I have no grudges against anybody. No grudges against anybody. I want everybody, everybody to get successful, make a lot of money, sell stuff that works, help people reach their goals. That's why I still do this, period. My goal, hell, if I didn't love doing this, I'd retire tomorrow, sell everything, and go coach football. That is what I love doing. But I, I do feel that I still have some time left here to do some epic stuff and help some people out. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, cool stuff. So go BHB. We've talked about that before. Talk about IP, the strongest IP ever. Go BHB. Man, if you haven't taken it, you got to buy it right now. If you go to tigerfitness.com, there's a pre-sale on MTS Nutrition, Go BHB. Um, that's going to be a banger, banger. And if you, you, if you don't want to pre-order, if you just want to get something now, go on Amazon, go on Google, type in Go BHB. And anything that has Go BHB, NutriCost is one brand. Um, that's using GoBHB because they protect their IP. I'm talking about that IP. That's that IP. So if you see GoBHB, if it says GoBHB, it's real BHB. It's not that bunk stuff. It's not that BS, 1-3-butendial like you'll find in Ketone IQ, which is not a ketone. It's an alcohol. It's hepatoxic. And it, it's just, a, it's, it's, it's travesty. It's, it's false marketing. They should be taken to the cleaners. I don't like those guys. They're liars. Don't like liars. Don't like them at all. Not at all. Not at all. Um, so much cool stuff. Anyway, guys, like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Oh, yeah, coupon code MAHA, M-A-H-A MAHA. Get you 10% off at Tiger Fitness. So go, go pre-order that thing. Get your Go BHB. You'll, it, again, it's going to change your life. It changed mine. Um, that's an ingredient with plenty of IP, with plenty of structure function. Anyway, guys, like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Click on the notification bell. And remember, because backing up your product with studies that's not a game.